Uh, I think some of the priorities that the CFO faces today uh, really stem out of what's been happening in the global economy for the last couple of years. Um, businesses have been under pressure, liquidity has been tighter, and this has led to the CFO being very much more brought back into the centre of running day-to-day -day business in organisations. Cash has become king again, liquidity is tight, therefore uh, decision making has become far more important from the point of view of ensuring uh, future success, long-term survival, uh, call it what you will. And this has brought the CFO right into the heart of the business, so it's been less about sales growth, long-term development and much more about effective business decision making and ensuring that uh, those decisions are going to secure the future of the business rather than a, a, a short-term uh, hike in, in revenues, maybe at the expense of long-term sustainability. So uh, the CFO is back into the middle of the business, very much uh, at the heart of what the business is doing, and uh, he has, or she has to impose him or herself right in the, the, the centre of business uh, in order to uh, ensure success for tomorrow. I think the challenges uh, facing the CFO today are quite considerable. Uh, organisations generally have uh, a number of issues to contend with. They have very challenging market conditions, they have uh, new competitive threats, new competitors coming in, uh, challenging traditional markets, they've got a much more educated customer base, uh, more demanding in terms of services and products in the marketplace. They, uh, they have to maintain the competitive edge, uh, uh, striving, moving forward. They're also faced with issues around technology changes, people's uh, habits uh, have changed, uh, the availability of the internet has uh, allowed people to uh, maybe buy things in a, in a new way, um, and that's led to a whole changing series of patterns that's imposed new pressures on the organisation. There are also uh, changes around with uh, environmental issues, green issues, sustainability issues, carbon, all of which inevitably come back into the office of the CFO. At the same time as the CFO facing uh, convergence issues around IFRS, um, differences between IFRS and US GAAP reporting, which results in two sets of books needing to be uh, produced and reported upon. But also the investor community is looking much more at uh, economic value in the business and ensuring that when they read the uh, financial statements of an organisation, that they can get an assessment of how well that business is doing, how well the uh, executives in the business are driving the business, and uh, what is the long-term value in that business. So all these pressures are coming back into the office of the CFO, and he needs to be focused on, uh, on the business, where it's going, making the right decisions, uh, and, and driving value in the organisation. And it's very much less of uh, keeping the books, undertaking the statutory and regulatory reporting. It's much more about being dynamic in the heart of the business and helping the fellow executives drive the business forward. I think the ne next three or five years is going to be quite exciting. Um, I was a CFO many years ago when the, uh, we were still using manual ledgers, we still had multiple uh, platforms we had to utilize. There was, there was no real linkage of technology between uh, different platforms. You know, you had to, there was a long process to, to bring accounts together. And we've seen a radical change in recent years. We've seen clearly the globalization of, of economies has led to uh, geographic borders coming down, language borders coming down, all really around technology enabled. Uh, change which is allowing now finance functions to be uh, located remotely from physical operations of the business uh, and it becomes a very virtual world then um, but the benefit of that is it opens up access to a new talent pool around the world uh, people have changed the, their uh, educational habits many are adopting uh, a course of study now around international finance qualifications so we're seeing people uh, going after CPA qualifications, CFA qualifications, certified and chartered accounting qualifications, uh, all of which are universally recognized and acknowledged. And uh, this is be becoming very attractive throughout uh, all parts of the world, whether it be Latin America, Central and Eastern Europe, Africa, uh, India, Russia, China, and, and so on. 
So the, the benefit for organizations is, firstly, technology is, is starting to reduce the, the, the burden around undertaking basic transactional activities. Um, the term lights out accounting is being used, which really means simply that um, technology will, will very much streamline uh, the basic end-to-end -end transactional flows and reduce the need for manual in intervention. So gone are the days when somebody would write out a purchase order and, and send it to somebody else for approval. When the goods were received in an organization, they'd write out a goods receive note and it was sent somewhere in the organization. And then when the invoice finally came in, you would match the invoice with the goods received note with the purchase order. All that now is very much done on the screen using workflow and other tools. Um, and that is, is really speeded up the whole end-to-end -end process, but it's reduced the need for, for physical intervention as well. So that will continue, and that then will lead to the finance function becoming very much more focused on value creation, working on strategic decision-making, tactical decisions, effective budgeting, forecasting, analysis, uh, and helping the executives of the organization to drive the business forward. So we're seeing the, the CFO coming out of the the score box, if you want to use a cricket analogy, he's no longer sitting up there keeping the score book. He's down on the pitch. He's helping to drive the game. He's moving the players around the pitch to uh, ensure that uh, the, the organization is fit for striving for future business success. So we're in for an interesting three to five years. It's a, it's a changing world out there. The CFO of tomorrow is very different from the CFO of the past. He's not just a finance man anymore. He's He's, uh, he's a businessman, he has to have strong communication skills, he needs to be a strong project manager, he needs to drive change, uh, and he's got to be at the heart of business as it evolves to be fit and lean and secure uh, to create sustainable future success.